Christmas is the answer. It is the needed answer to the question that dogs us all. Where is God? Most of us wonder that question from time to time, although some of us who say we're Christians may deny that we do. But certainly the question is one that the world will ask us persistently. Where is God? We who know Jesus know God is with us. Since Bethlehem, the word of God came among us to be one of us. He has experienced what we experience. Birth, death, anger, fear, friendship, opposition, injustice, abandonment, betrayal. He has been sleepy and hungry and tired, as we have. He has learned to speak a language or two, read a book, learn a trade, work for a living. He shared that, all those things, alongside of us. He is still alongside of us. He has a human family, a mother and a father, sisters and brothers, cousins, aunts and uncles. He also has the larger family that the father gave him, which he claimed for himself, anyone who followed the will of God. He has seen, and maybe you have, Everything he worked for for years collapsed in a few days. And he has faced death. As you know, he was beaten, humiliated, abandoned, and rejected by the people that he had taught, led, and loved. But tonight, we look back to the night when the word came among us first. The word unable to speak a word, as floppy as any newborn, and in as much need of his father and his mother as any other child. Yet this is the one that the, at the beginning of all that is, it was he who formed everything that he saw in the mind of God and brought it into being the vast structures of the galaxies, the intricate twists of the molecules, gravity, dark matter, all that. And then our biological life. He knows every cell in our bodies and every cell and fragment of life in all creation. Think on our small planet alone, how many different kinds of living things there are, and how wonderful and strange and beautiful they are. He is the one through whom all that came. Where is God? God tonight so long ago, but also still, entered into history as one of us, as human as you. He invaded our barricaded world and our barricaded hearts. Not as we would expect, with power and shock and awe and overwhelming force, the word came without armies, without money, without position, and set out to conquer our planet with love, to change us so we change, change our hearts, and we change our world. Consider this. 
And I think it's important. The word did not come to a great city, nor was he a prince's child, nor a billionaire's boy. Joseph, his earthly father, was a tradesman. His mother is what we would call a homemaker. No one knew that God had come into the world, or even that the Messiah, whoever he is, was born except a few unimportant and terrified shepherds, and later on, a few scholarly astrologists. Where is God? The incarnate God lived in unimportant towns. Both the village of Bethlehem and the town of Nazareth were spots on the map that no one went to. They were nowhere near any place important. Rome, Athens, Alexandria, London, Paris, Berlin, New York, Shanghai, Beijing, Houston, San Francisco, Singapore, Dallas. Outside them all. Because he is the word of God, the one who came and was made flesh, that is immensely important for us, for the rest of us who share his body and his humanity. If God made man can show up anywhere in the places that are, as the world counts them, nowheres, then in the nowheres, and frequently among the nobodies, those are the important places. The people who aren't important are maybe much more important than we thought. As his agents now in the world, we may be on critical missions that may be as ignored by our times as Jesus's was by his time when he came to change the world. He ended with a handful of believers, and now all times are his, and more than half the world acknowledges his lordship. Tonight, as in every night, is in his hands. Imagine trying to tell an intelligent Roman citizen that the most important thing that had happened in his lifetime, in a thousand lifetimes, in 14 billion years, happened in where was it? A village in Myanmar? Or was it Palestine? Western Anatolia? And out of that village will come, did come, the one whose birth will be celebrated around the world tonight. No Roman with an ounce of sense would have bought off on such a wild conspiracy. So where is God? God is with us. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. We share with him. Now think about this. We share with him the same blood as when we share with every other human being. And Jesus' solution to the world's sickness, the worldwide pandemic of sin, was to die so that we might live and we might find new life in his body and his blood. If we choose to receive his infusion into our bodies by water and the spirit with his food and drink, and of course, most terribly, we can choose not to. If we do, he promises to change us, to renew us. Right now, that invitation is still yours, mine, 
anyone's tonight. And by the way, it's all paid for too. He did that. And with the Spirit of God within us, with the Spirit of God now where we are, we can move in love and light. Where is God? God is here with us. Christ weeps when we weep, rejoices when we rejoice, shares our lives, our deaths, our births, and like the great conductor of life that he is, writes it all into his new singing of a new creation. God is with us always and always and forevermore. Amen.